Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. A couple of years ago, we were delighted to chill our audience with the performance of Frank Lovejoy in a story of civilian aviation called The Long Night. Since that time, Mr. Lovejoy, undaunted by the terrors of his performance, began taking flying lessons and recently qualified and was licensed as a private pilot. This accomplishment, plus the many requests of air-minded listeners, have impelled us to repeat the story now with a deep bow of appreciation to the unsung heroes of the Civil Aeronautics Administration who man the control towers of the nation's airports all day long and through every long night. Listen... Listen, then, as Frank Lovejoy stars in The Long Night, which begins in just a moment. Memo on medals. Interesting information about our military awards and decorations. For almost the first half century of its existence, from 1862 till 1904, the original design of the Medal of Honor was identical for both the Army and Navy. A five-pointed star with a large medallion in the center showing the goddess of wisdom, Minerva, warding off the figure of discord. The Navy Medal of Honor hung suspended from its ribbon by a small anchor, the Army Medal of Honor by an eagle resting on crossed cannons. Originally, the ribbon was the same for both branches of service, 13 vertical stripes of red and white topped with a blue border. In 1904, the Army changed its medal to the present design, with just the head profile of Minerva in the center of a smaller star backed with a green enamel laurel wreath. In 1913, the Navy changed its Medal of Honor service ribbon and in 1919 made an additional change, resulting in the present-day design, five white stars on a field of blue. The Medal of Honor today, as in the past, remains the highest military decoration that can be earned by an American serviceman for devotion and valor above and beyond the call of duty. It is an inspiring call to great sacrifice and dedication, undimmed throughout the long years of our history as a free people. And now, The Long Night, starring Frank Lovejoy, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Rockford Radio. This is Delta 2318. Over. Delta 2318. This is Rockford Radio. Go ahead. You stand in the Delta airport control tower, 90 feet up in the sky over Rockford Field, waiting to go on the night watch. And you listen to the babble of voices that fill the crowded room in an endless series of requests. Request for an altitude change, request for landing permission, request for the weather. Ceiling 2,200 feet and lowering steadily. Smoke and haze below cloud ceiling with fog blowing in from the northeast. Cloud, smoke, haze and fog and a ceiling getting lower every minute. This is going to be a long night. Okay, Charlie, I'll take it. Yeah, well, happy landing. Uh, yeah. So long, Charlie. Rockford, this is TWA Flight 70, 11,000 feet, Medford, 2100. TWA 70, acknowledge. Rockford, Rockford Tower, this is Beechcraft Bonanza 91457. Beechcraft 91457, this Rockford Tower, over. I've been homing on your range, and apparently my automatic direction finder isn't working right. What seems to be the trouble with your ADF? I don't know exactly. I've been changing from one range to another, just like I was told to, and I ought to have been somewhere over Minneapolis long ago. I'm not. All right, 457, we'll work something out for you. Where are you flying from? Indianapolis. Uh, What was your last known position? Gee, uh, last... um, Well, uh... I'm trying to think. I, I guess the last time I positively knew where I was was when I departed Indianapolis. Oh, uh, what time was that? About 5.30, maybe 5.45. 5.30? Please verify. That would be more than three hours en route. You should be well out of my range. Yeah, I know, but I've been circling for more than an hour trying to make the ADF work and looking for Rockford. What's your remaining fuel? Well, I... I guess there's no use kidding myself. I think I've got about 45 minutes. Maybe it's the very best an hour. 
Uh, what's your altitude? I'm uh, at uh, 5,000 indicated, about 1,000 above the clouds. Four, five, seven, take a good look around you. Are there any uh, breaks in that overcast? Do you see any holes, any thin spots in your area at all? No, 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 it's solid. It, it's a completely solid layer. Are you an instrument pilot? What do you mean? I mean, you checked out on instruments. Do you have any instrument training? No, 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 I've never been on instruments in my life. I'm just lost. <laughs> In a moment, we continue with the second act of Suspense. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Ooh, ow, ouch, ooh. What's wrong, Joe? Daphne, have you been using my razor again? Just a little. I was peeling peaches. Oh, fine. Why didn't you change the blade? It feels like you've been sharpening pencils with this thing. Now, just a minute, buddy. It was you who said we could use more economy around here. And I've been saving wherever I can. And by shaving the skin off the peaches... But look at my face. Think how the Red Cross could have used all this blood. It's your own fault. You and your economy. Well, being penny conscious isn't such a bad idea. Not if you use common sense. Take savings bonds, for instance. Uh-uh. Here it comes. Go right ahead and scoff. But I got eight million Americans who agree with me. We all buy savings bonds on the payroll saving plan because we know that investing in bonds is the best way to use our money. We could use some of that money around here. Well, maybe, or maybe we just think we can. When we buy bonds, we guarantee we'll have the money in the future when we'll certainly need it more. Stop waving that razor. You're splattering me with soap. Well, I don't mean to get excited, but who wouldn't? Where else can a man make an investment that's guaranteed to pay off $4 for every three? and guaranteed by the credit of the whole U.S. of A. So there. Bravo! Bravo! All right, all right. Now let me change the blade and get back to shaving. I think I'll stay and watch. Why? Because you're so cute when you cut yourself. Oh, fine. And now, starring Frank Lovejoy, Act Two of The Long Night. You look at the clock, 9.04. You look at the clock and mentally give yourself 45 minutes. 45 minutes to find him, bring him in, and get him on the ground. Your mouth feels dry, you reach for a cigarette, and you do the next thing that must be done. A uh, Mike. Yeah. ATC emergency. Roger. This is Rockford Tower. Emergency to all concerned. Emergency landing at Rockford Airport. All aircraft below 8,000 feet within 20 miles of Rockford radio range leave courses immediately and maintain... Rockford radio Tower, Beechcraft, 91457. Tower. Come in, 457. Okay, Rockford. Emergency landing at Tell me, are you familiar with range orientation? No, I don't know anything about that either. I'm just a businessman with a new airplane. I know only enough about the radio to tune in the station. Six, seven, Alfred, knowledge. I know I'm lost, though, and need help. These gas tanks aren't getting any fuller. Yes, yes, I know. Now, I'm going to try a fix on you and bring you in over the Rockford Airport. I'll tell you what must be done, but you have got to do it. I can't fly the airplane for you, do you understand? Yeah, okay, Rockford, I understand. I want you to listen very closely to the rain signal. Put everything else out of your mind. Listen and describe exactly what you hear. Okay. Uh, hello, Rockford. I, I hear a code sound. Is that the range? That's right. Now, what does it sound like? Well, it, uh, it, it goes... Da -di -da -di okay, 457. Now, is it loud or soft? It's pretty loud. Okay, that's the N quadrant. Now... I want you to tune to the Madison, Wisconsin range and tell me what you hear. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, uh, hello, Rockford. I, I've got the Madison range. Oh, what does that read? What's well, just like the other, only backwards. Uh, dit da, dit da. That's right. I can hardly hear it, but it's there, all right. Okay, four, five, seven. Now that's the A quadrant. Now, I want you to try Peoria and then Chicago. Rockford, Madison, Peoria, Chicago. Four corners to check from. 
four radio sounds that you hope he's reading correctly. You finish the check and he comes through without a bobble, you know you have him fixed. You know at least his direction from you. You take a deep breath and for the first time you feel a tiny flicker of hope that you're going to find your stranger and get him in all right. But you're a long way from home, you light another cigarette and you push the black microphone button hard. Now listen carefully, 457, I'm going to run a check procedure on you. I want you to take up a northeast heading. Turn your volume down as low as you can and still receive the rain signal. At the very moment you detect the change in signal strength, either higher or lower, advise me. All right, Rockford, I'll do my best. Uh, hello, Rockford, my gauges indicate empty tanks. There's some gas left, I know, but I have no idea how much. You know where I am? I'm quite sure of your direction from me, and I believe I know how far you are out within, say, 20 miles. If what you've told me is correct, I estimate you have 30 minutes fuel remaining. I believe your gauges are indicating normally. Now try to concentrate on doing what I've told you to do. Yeah, okay, Rockford. I, I don't want you to think I'm, I'm ungrateful. I, I realize you, you can't afford mistakes, but I, I can't last much longer. I, I, I'm not trying to hurry you, but the gauges stay empty and my son is getting sick. You didn't say anything about having any passengers aboard. How many are there? Just my son and me. Well, is the air rough? Is there turbulence? No, the air is smooth. Well, you said your son is getting sick. Why, well, he's scared. That's what's making him sick. You see, he's only nine years old. In a moment, we continue with the third act of Suspense. We have together... Ample capacity in freedom to defend freedom. This is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Soviet-dominated nations are held together only by political and military coercion. The strength and fiber of NATO lies in the fundamental unity in the face of dangers which threaten. Thanks to this solid fundamental unity, NATO nations can overcome difficulties and bring into harmony their individual points of view. The United States of America is a part of NATO. You should be aware of and alert to the objectives and programs of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And now, starring Frank Lovejoy, Act Three of The Long Night. You don't say anything for a long minute. You just stare out into the miserable night and your thoughts are not nice. You think of your own kid and you thank God he's home safely in bed. And now you have an even stronger reason to bring this stranger home. You reach for the microphone button. Now listen carefully, 457. You should be approaching my west leg close into the station. I want you to listen carefully and describe any change in your signal. I won't call you. You call me when you hear anything change. Okay, Rockford. Hello, Rockford, the signal is much louder now, and I, I'm getting more of a continuous tone in my earphones, although I can still hear that other signal. All right, 457, that's fine, that's good. Now listen carefully. When you hear nothing but a tone, when there's nothing but a loud buzz in your ears, I want you to turn right to 93 degrees on your compass. Do you understand me? Yeah, I understand. Turn right to 90, uh, to 93 degrees on the compass when I hear a loud tone. That is correct. The tone is strong now. I, I don't hear the other signal, nothing but the tone, shall I? Yes, yes, turn right, turn to 93 degrees and advise. Advise? Advise when on course, when on 93 degrees, advise. Oh, Roger, advise when on... Oh, I'm on course now, on, on 93. Good. Now, you're approaching the range now, almost over the station. The range is about two miles from where I'm sitting. The signal you hear will continue to increase in volume until you cross the range. At that time, it will fade out quickly, and for a moment, you may hear nothing. Then it will increase again rapidly. Now, at the very instant your signal fades, I want you to make an immediate left turn to a heading of four, five degrees. You take that heading and advise, understand? I understand. Mike. Yeah. 
Get on the phone and alert the local police and fire departments. Tell them what we've got. Roger. Get all the lights on on the field and the runway markers. If we get him down through this, he won't have any time to spend looking for the field. Yeah, will do. That is, Operator. if we get him down through yeah. it. Rockford, Rockford, I, I'm over the range and starting a turn. It's just like you said. It's, it's exactly the way you said it would be. Roger, 457. You're doing fine. Now, come left to 45, straight and level. Hold it until I tell you different. I'll call you back. I think you got him, Ken. If he's where he ought to be, we'll hear him in about 20 seconds. I'm going out on the platform and listen. Let me know if he calls in. Okay. You stand on the steel grating of the tower platform. You try to hear over the sounds from the field below. You strain your ears for a sound that should come to you out of the southwest. You never want to hear anything so much in your life. You hold your breath. You stop breathing to hear better. And then it's there, a single engine singing a quiet, sweet sound and approaching directly on course. You flick your burning cigarette out into the black space and stumble back into the tower room and grab the mic. 457, this is Rockford. You're over the field. I hear you clearly. Start a 360 immediately in orbit in your present area. Beginning at 360... For God's sake, tell me what to do. This engine is ready to quit. Snap a look at the clock. It's 9.46. Five, maybe six minutes more if you're lucky. Six minutes at the outside to get him lined up properly for a straight-in approach to talk him down through 4,000 feet of solid clouds. Six minutes to bring off a miracle. You mash the microphone button hard and you try to sound calm. 457, I hear you plainly. You're circling the airport. Now, there isn't time to talk this thing out. You'll have to do exactly what I tell you to do the first time and do it right. There simply isn't enough time. Wait a minute. Do you have any chutes, uh, parachutes aboard? No, no parachutes. All right, all right. We'll have to do it this way. Now, listen to what I say. You don't have to talk. You just listen. Now, come around to a due west heading. Due west. As you do, start slowing her down. Slow her down. Trim her up for a power approach on normal... Power approach, do you understand? I understand, Rock. Don't talk, don't talk. Just bring her around. Head west, power on, slow her down. Flaps down to approach position. Trim her up, make her steady. Advise me when you're headed west and slowed down. I'm trying to get her steady. I'm trying to do what you told me. All right, me. all right, 457. Don't talk. Advise when on course. Rockford, I, I'm on 270 now, slowing down. I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, I know you don't know. All we can do is try. I'm down to 80 now, flaps down and power on. Roger, now, 457. You're going to bring her around very slowly and precisely to an east heading. You're going to handle her very gently so she won't fall off on you flying so slow. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Let her continue to settle at 500 feet a minute. Just bring her around slowly to the east. Recover. And then take your hands off the control. She won't fly with my hands off the... She will fly. She'll fly better than you can. Now listen to me. When you're eastbound, hands off. She'll descend slowly into the clouds. After you're in those clouds, do not touch the controls. I don't think that don't I... Don't think. Do as I tell you. Now, when you get in the clouds, everything will change for you. You'll think the airplane is all wrong, that it's doing everything it shouldn't do. If you leave it alone, it'll start a slow spiral to the left, but I don't think it'll be enough to do any harm until you've broken out under the ceiling. Now, whatever it does... You'll think it's going to the right or up or down or even spinning. But it won't be doing any of those things unless you make it do them. Now, don't touch it. Are you eastbound? I'm eastbound, yes. Now, take your hands off the control. But I... Take your hands off now. Okay. Hands are off. All right, now, just let her have it. Let her fly herself. 
ceiling's down to 600 feet, Ken. Oh. Doesn't give him much time to recover and get his bearings when he breaks out, but it's all we can do. It's all anybody can do. You stand there waiting. You're only too aware of what can be happening in the cabin of Beechcraft 457. Sweating out each second of the time with a terrified pilot and his deathly scared kid. You wonder if this man, this stranger, and yet no longer a stranger, can keep his fantasies under control for the long letdown. The lonely, long letdown through total darkness with nothing but a great fear for a companion. A minute goes by, another, and then... Rockford! Rockford, it's turning, Rockford! Turning airspeed high, going higher! Get off those controls, cut the throttle! All right, she's going to stall. Give her the throttle slowly. Keep your hands off except the throttle. She'll climb back out on top if you keep your hands off her. Two minutes wasted. And now if the teacup of gas still in his tanks holds out, if he gets back on top, you still have to do it all over again. You begin to feel the long night closing in on you. He's almost calm when he calls you back this time. You can almost hear his sigh of relief. Hello, Rockford. I'm back on top now. Good. Now let's try it with the power off this time. No use, Rockford. It's just no use. I can't do it. I was fine until I got into those clouds. I just couldn't sit there and do nothing. I just couldn't. I know I can't do it again. Listen, there's time. There's time for another try. Forget it. The engine just quit. That's it, Rockford. You can Forget still... Forget it. You're wasting your time. I just want to say thanks for trying. Hello, 457. Hello, Beach, 457. He can't hear you, Ken. His hands froze to the mic. Yeah. You better hit the crash button. Roger. Rockford Tower to all planes awaiting landing instructions. The emergency is over. Normal radio procedure is now in effect. Rockford Tower out. This is United 512 at 12,000 feet. Plain view range at 2151. Suspense, in which Frank Lovejoy starred in William N. Robeson's production of The Long Night, adapted by Sam Pierce from the story by Lowell D. Blanton. Supporting Frank Lovejoy in The Long Night were Barney Phillips, Peter Leeds, Sam Pierce, and Eddie Firestone. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with It's All in Your Mind, starring Barry Kroger. A tale of telepathy and terror, well calculated to keep you in suspense. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.